Today's weird 90s computer shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. Just look at this absolute unit of a 90s Zenith laptop. A bit too chunk for your tastes? Never fear, this cool boombox part comes off because it's actually just a dock. Oh, still too chunk? Don't worry, just release these two latches here and the screen comes right off. Zenith, what the follow along as we investigate this really weird laptop thing and together we'll speculate as to just what in the heck was going on with Zenith back in the mid 90s. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy mocking the high technology of yesteryear with the hindsight of our modern, terrifying, dystopian, technological nightmare, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. I have way more wacky computers where this stuff came from, so it's definitely worth sticking around. So I have an alert set up for Zenith laptop and, uh, well, an alert popped through with a picture of this monstrosity. And I have absolutely no self-control so I bought it. And wouldn't you know, there's almost no information about this thing on the internet. I found one blog post about someone restoring a version of one of these things, but they only had the top laptop part and not the cool boombox dock. And it made no mention of the screen coming off, despite the fact that, yeah, they had the latches clearly visible in the pictures of the restoration, but I guess you never expect the freaking screen to just detach. So, what in the heck is this thing? Well, I posted a picture of it on Twitter and someone came through with a scan of an ad from 1994. Apparently, it's the Zenote Flex system, which Zenith thought would be the ultimate multimedia presenter. It originally came in a 486 with color or passive matrix grayscale, but I lucked into a later model, the Zenote Flex P. The P stands for Perfect proportions. Or actually it probably stands for Pentium because that's what this thing has, a Pentium 75. Beyond that, I'm just not sure. When I turn this thing on, it just goes straight to BIOS and no matter what I do, it just goes right back into BIOS and doesn't boot into anything. Now, I know that our whiteboard guy would have something snarky to say about this thing, but he brought his son to work today who's been trying to learn the whiteboard ropes. Though, I don't think he really understands how the whiteboard works. You're doing great! Now, I'd love to get Windows 98 on here because I think it would actually make a pretty sweet gaming machine because it has a nice TFT color display and this uh, <laughs> full-size CD-ROM drive and, of course, these big honking speakers. But to do that, we're gonna have to figure out why it's not booting and, uh, yeah. See if there's anything else wrong with it. So why don't we start with me showing you what it does when we turn it on and try to boot it up and then crack this thing open and see if we can't build our ultimate mid 90s LAN party laptop. But first, a word about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business or brand using Squarespace's powerful all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started. Like say I wanted to build a website all about the lost modular future that Zenith was trying to sell us. Not only could I build it in minutes with Squarespace, but it would be well-designed, responsive, and mobile-friendly. There's a ton of beautiful templates that I could choose to start from. And from there, it's simple to build a great-looking site that's also fast, responsive, and works great on mobile devices. With Squarespace's extensive built-in toolset, I can also optimize for SEO, manage a mailing list, check my analytics, and much more. So check out squarespace.com slash actionretro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code actionretro to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, I don't have whatever power adapter was supposed to come with this thing, but fortunately, our good old friend three-prong computer guy fits right in the back of the dock and powers the whole thing. And disconcertingly, as soon as you plug this thing in, the fan starts spinning, which makes you think that something's wrong with it. But now we can turn it on and uh, yeah, the second disconcerting thing happens. Ugh. <laughs> 
Yeah, it makes a horrifying popping noise, but uh, yeah, that's just the speakers saying hello. So we boot right into BIOS, and I could have swore I heard something in here clicking like a hard drive, uh, but I don't think it works because if I set this stuff and uh, try to tell it to boot from the hard drive, well, it takes us right back into this BIOS utility. And uh, yeah, if I set it to boot from the floppy drive, so if I go to setup, advanced boot option floppy, then HDD, and then we give it a good old DOS 622 floppy. Well, now we're booting into MS-DOS. Oh yeah, I forgot. This was my MS-DOS disk to try to get USB working on my brother Super Power Note word processor. <laughs> forgot that was in there. But yeah, if we try to go to the C drive here, yeah, it doesn't exist. So I don't think whatever hard drive is in here is working if there is indeed a hard drive in here. So let's detach our base here and uh, dig into the laptop portion. On the bottom here, we have a couple of compartments. This one's actually labeled hard disk drive and there's no screw holding it in, although it looks like maybe there was something originally and then one of these is going to be for memory and the other one for who knows what but let's pull out the hard drive this is like a very weird kind of mechanism uh i guess you just get in there oh and uh whoa <laughs> i was not expecting that it's a two and a half inch, 800 megabyte flash drive. This is an old, old solid state storage. I have, honestly, I've never seen one of these before. <laughs> okay, under door number two here, which I also think just comes right out. <laughs> yep. Ram. Oh, neat. And it's fully populated with two sticks. Oh, and there's Ram built into the motherboard too. I wonder how much this is in total. These are weird. Look at these tiny little RAM sticks. All right, so what's behind door number three? The only one with screws. And a little crack in the plastic here. So we'll have to be gentle. Oh, cool. Yeah, the processor is on a daughter card here. It looks like this heatsink is on there with thermal glue, so I'll just leave that on there. Neat. Okay, so I hooked up the original hard drive with this nice little adapter thing on my modern computer to see if I could find any data on it. And it looks like this thing is just completely dead, so that's maybe a good thing because Let's hope we can just try a new hard drive like this cool dual CF adapter that I have and everything will just work. Well, who would have guessed that everything did not just work? I tried this pile of both real IDE hard drives and all sorts of every adapter I could find, MSATA adapters, CF adapters, none of it worked. I even tried taking out the memory just in case huh, maybe this is bad, but yeah, it doesn't see any of these hard drives. And the other thing I discovered is that it doesn't see this CD-ROM drive, so I can't boot off of like a Windows install CD there. And I tried this external parallel backport CD-ROM drive. It also does not see this. So we can boot into MS-DOS just fine from the floppy drive. This is a Windows 98 install boot floppy and uh, it can boot off of this, but it can't find the CD-ROM drive and it can't find any of these hard drives. Okay, well, small update. I can hear something rattling around in there. I think there's something loose. Uh, let's take this thing apart and I don't know, maybe there's like a screw loose in there that's shorting stuff out. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> And of course, there's no guide online about how to take these things apart because there's, well, almost nothing online about how to take these apart. So we're going to do the tried and true method of 
winging it. <laughs> so, cue up a montage. Oh, neat. The CMOS battery is <laughs> inside a little hatch in the side. Oh man, Zenith. I barely even touched it. What the heck? That was my favorite part. Oh man. This was very annoying to take apart. <laughs> oh, I found it. What the heck is this? There's like a little metal bar <laughs> floating around in there. Uh, maybe this was it? I'd like to try and check the connection of the hard drive thingamajig. And I guess I have to take this whole board out. Well, the years have not been kind to the plastic posts in here, so I guess we'll glue them back together. Okay, so I mostly have it back together and <laughs> that was a massive nightmare taking this thing apart and then putting it back together because all of the plastics just immediately crumble on here and uh, I'm pretty sure I got super glue in my hair and I broke my favorite part, this little screen. I can't believe that. Oh man. But we did find some bits of metal in there that maybe was our problem and I've got this two gigabyte CF card on an adapter in the hard drive bay. So <laughs> what do you think the odds are of this thing never turning on again? All right, well, here goes. Will the behemoth live? Oh, it's alive. <laughs> oh, it sees uh, a hard drive, although that's not the right size. It's a two gigabyte CF card. It says it's 998 megabytes. The more important question is what does DOS see? <laughs> Oh man, look, DOS setup sees a hard drive now. <laughs> yep, it's 1995. It's installing. All right, DOS is installed. <laughs> yeah, successfully, I think. So this should reboot it and hopefully boot from the CF card. All right, we are on the C drive. Oh, what was that? Uh-oh. Well, I'm glad I caught that on camera. Oh, it's back. <laughs> hmm. That's a little disconcerting. <laughs> oh, good. Memory allocation error. That's, uh, nice. <laughs> okay, so I know I said I wanted to install Windows 98 on this thing, but, uh, I found something really cool a Zenith branded Windows 3.1. And uh, I'm kind of hoping that by installing this, it will install some drivers for the dock as well. Uh, so yeah, let's give it a shot. All right, look, I finally get to try out the trackball on this thing. And, uh, oh, it is not good. <laughs> kind of squeaky. But hey, it works. I'm starting to get excited now. I see Wolfenstein 3D in our future. Hey, cool, look, it's branded. <laughs> Zenith Data Systems, Windows 3.1. Did it just reboot? Oh man. Try this again. All right, I guess we're not doing Windows 3.1 even though it installed successfully. <laughs> uh, all right, well, I have the nuclear option. Get ready for this. We obviously can't install Windows with a CD, but Windows 98 also came 
on 38 floppy disks. And I have made 38 floppy disks with DD on the command line in Mac OS. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can install Windows 98 on this thing. Oh God, this is gonna be painful. <laughs> Look at that, starting Windows 98. All right, it's asking for disk one. <laughs> Here we go. Setup has detected a corrupt cab file. All right, well, pile of floppies not good enough for it. That's okay. I have another idea. I hooked the CF card up to a modern computer and just, oh geez, okay. <laughs> yeah, just turn off, that's fine. I don't know why the screen keeps cutting off like that. I'm sure that's an intended feature, but I hooked this CF card up to a modern computer and copied over all of the Windows setup files and also some games so we can see if maybe we get some cool sound and we can enjoy this computer a little bit. All right, so Wolf3D detected an ad lib sound card before the screen blanked out again. Why do you keep doing that? No, it detected a sound blaster. Okay, but there's no audio. All right, we're in game. There is no sound except, oh my God. Why do you do this? Maybe this docking station's on its way out. And it froze. Okay, so we could stop here and say that yeah, this computer has a lot of problems and it doesn't want to boot anything, but yeah, I'm not going to let a Zenith defeat us. We're really going to go nuclear now. I took apart the dock here and took out the power supply, which is probably broken. And uh, yeah, found two really interesting things. First of all, <laughs> look, this thing has a handle. <laughs> you, can, you can really carry this around like a boom box. <laughs> Secondly, this power supply here, yeah, it's just providing power to two regular Molex connectors and that's all that powers this dock. So <laughs> guess what we should be able to do? Yeah, let's take a full-fledged desktop power supply <laughs> and see if we can power the dock that way. And uh, I just want to caveat that this might not be the smartest idea, so don't try this at home. <laughs> okay, so I've got the green and black wires jumped here so that we have soft power enabled. So now when we hit this power switch, our dock should come to life. Oh God. It works. Okay, here's the real test. Does it explode? It looks like it's coming up. Oh yeah, starting MS-DOS. All right, well, we're in DOS from the CF card. Now I have the Windows 98 set up here. Let's see if we can install Windows 98 this way. Hey, look at that, we're in Windows 98 setup. So I guess we'll let this do its thing, install the most minimal Windows 98 that we can. And then, yeah, we'll see if it freezes or cuts out again. And if it does, I guess it's the electronics in the dock and not just the power supply. So far, so good. Oh no, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Guess what, it froze. We have gone through a lot of trouble for you today and you can't even get the setup started. Okay, so every now and then, the vintage computer defeats us. And I think that's the case here because I think this thing has a lot of problems. Maybe that battery leakage messed something up. Maybe the caps are bad. I don't know. I didn't see any leaking caps in there. I definitely know the power supply was flaking out because after I put that beefy modern ATX power supply in there, 
It didn't cut off again, but maybe when that power supply was going out, it fried some other stuff on the motherboard and uh, yeah, it definitely has some issues. But in the time since I filmed that last scene, I did do a bunch of research trying to find stuff about this machine. And it turns out they were really trying to sell you on the idea of absolute unlimited modularity. Sure, other laptops let you upgrade the hard drive or the memory, so does the Zenith, but the Zenith goes further because as we see, you can just upgrade the screen. Zenith imagined that people would have the passive matrix display and one day decide, hey, let's call Zenith and ship out the display with the active matrix TFT screen. Why not? It just latches right off and latch the new one right in and you're good to go. <laughs> they also had some accessories for you to use this as a desktop. We have the top of the line docking station. They also had a more reasonable looking docking station. It looks like they also sold a stand for the monitor in case you wanted to take this off and sit it here, use it more like a desktop LCD. And I guess that was pretty cool. <laughs> kind of turning this into just a, a regular old desktop PC. But Zenith data systems didn't last too long after this thing came out. In fact, in 1996, they merged with Packard Bell and MEC and uh, yeah, Really never heard from Zenith Data Systems again after that. So I both hate this machine now, and I'm also still very intrigued by it. So I really wanna find some of the other accessories for it, even though this thing is literally disintegrating in front of us as these old plastics crumble. And maybe we would have better luck installing stuff if we had the original laptop's power supply, which takes this very weird DIN connector. So if you have any leads on a ZDS goofy DIN style power supply, do let me know in the comments. But that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of whatever the heck we were doing today, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Camilla Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Cobalt Retrotech, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Dwight Spencer, Greg from K Mods, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Thompson, and Sutek, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters who help to make these videos possible. <laughs>